uh, we are a bit of ahead of with, with the time. So we decided to go with my session, which is all about integrations and what SQFint actually provides in this area. And then if we have time, we'll get back to his session. So the question about integration is popping more and more often uh, recently because uh, companies and uh, actually customers realize that it's not just enough to have a very easy uh, uh, CMS, but also a CMS that can play nicely with other softwares in the, in the company, in the businesses, and so on. So in this session, I'm going to talk about out-of-the-box out of connectors and features, uh, then data and storage providers, search providers and services, API integrations, and finally, a few words about Sequinti 8.1 and the future. And after each part, we'll have very short time for uh, some questions and answers because these topics are pretty diverse. So we better ask questions while we're on, on the spot. So the first topic is about the out-of-the-box connectors and features. And I will first start with the connector for DEC, our digital experience cloud, because this is the highlight of our, uh, our event and our uh, latest release. So with this connector, can I use this? Mm -hmm. It's working. With this connector, you can track automatically page visits, both regular and, <coughs> and uh, host personalized pages. You can track form submissions, and you have the options to say which form and which field of these forms to go to which uh, fields in the profiles in DC. You can track file downloads, comments, forums, users, events like login, logout, register, profile, field changes. So for example, when someone changes his company, you can track this. Uh, social tracking, this is who shared and liked to what from our website. And everything else with an SDK, which means that basically you can track even when someone makes a mouse hover or mouse over a, a phone number. And you can say these guys might have I need to pick up the phone and speak to someone. And you can track this with the JavaScript SDK. It's pretty easy SDK and it's, um, it needs a little bit of uh, development help so that they can instrument all the elements from the HTML. Uh, also, the DEC connector provides this screen that Ivalo already talked about in his session in Sitefinity. And this screen is uh, basically showing you the top personas, the top campaigns, the top conversions that are happening on the websites, as well as lead scoring and all this in the context of the CMS. <coughs> the next connector that I'm going to talk about is connector for SharePoint 2010 and 2013. We did this for, I think, 26 point something. It was last year. And it supports two ways of syncing and task uh, scheduling, which means that you can sync content either from the SharePoint site or from the site Finity site. And you can configure who is the master and who is the slave in this scenario in case uh, someone modifies a website document on the SharePoint site and at the same time some other guy have a, a modification or change on the same document from the site Finity site. You can configure who is the master of this conflict uh, situation. <coughs> We can also set up multiple SharePoint sites and instances and actually connect to as much sites as you have. Uh, you can sync any type of SharePoint list, so every SharePoint list can become a new content type in Sitefinity with all the fields, with all the data that they hold. You can sync libraries and images and as well as calendars and events. Uh, as I said, we have the fields mapping, so you have the advanced uh, configurations and to say which fields from uh, items in SharePoint go to which fields and content in Sitefinity. And we support even the uh, reference fields. So these are complex fields that point to some other types. Now, we did the same thing for the SharePoint Online. So we support all the things that we support in SharePoint 2010 and 2013. We support for SharePoint Online. And we also support both cloud and on-premise setups, which means that you can connect to either Office 365 in the cloud or Office 365 
on premises. And this is effectively integration with Office 365 Enterprise because SharePoint Online is part of this edition. And as well, this is uh, effectively a way to integrate actually the desktop of, of the users and the OneDrive that they use to upload documents with the site hint. So you might have someone who just copy paste documents between the desktop and the OneDrive and these documents can appear on internet websites, on internet portals and so on. I'll wait. <laughs> uh, one interesting note to, to make here, Microsoft decided that they are not going to continue supporting the SharePoint websites. You probably know about it. So this means that Sitefinity can de facto become the uh, extension of the SharePoint and, the, and to provide this missing piece of uh, functionality. <coughs> the next connector that I'm going to talk about is connector for Salesforce. Uh, again, it supports two-way syncing and scheduling. So you can say, I want my users from the websites to sync every day at 4 p.m. to the CRM. And you can sync both users and, and also all the users that are in certain roles. And you can sync those to leads or contacts. We also support the syncing of uh, CMS forms, which means that if you have, so for example, contact us form, you can sync this form to the CRM and say, these are the guys that come from websites. Uh, you can put a special field or a special value for these people so that you can find them later. And uh, you can also make the other way around. So if you have already contacts that are in the CRM, you can sync them to Sitfinity and they effectively become website users. And we have uh, examples on GitHub that show you how you can make actually um, single sign-on between Salesforce and Sitefinity websites in case you have users on both systems. So how you can make the CRM users all of a sudden website users with profiles and everything. One thing to add about the Salesforce scenario is uh, very interesting that uh, I was talking earlier about how to integrate contacts from different systems into VEC and into the Visual Experience Cloud and how to make sure that uh, the right contacts are matched with the right contacts. Well, with this connector, that's how offered out of the box from Sitfinity. Mm -hmm. uh, with the fact that the Visual Experience Cloud also has a connector to Salesforce, uh, we ensure out of the box again that uh, Salesforce and Sitfinity users are in sync. So if you're using Salesforce as a CRM, that means it's very easy to match those contacts and to receive the right contact profiling directly with the connector that we provide without the need of additional implementations of mapping or uh, integration. Okay, thank you, Ivo. And the next connector is the connector for MS Dynamics. Uh, for this connector, we provide it together with our, pav uh, with our partner, uh, Pavlix. Uh, they have developed the whole connector it's pretty powerful, but you can also purchase it from our website as well. Uh, with, with actually this connector, you can access any CRM entity that you have on the <laughs> Dynamics site. So charts, users, contacts, emails, um, analysis, documents, everything can, can be accessed and, and can be put on the website from the uh, Dynamics. And you can also change these entities as well. So it's not just only access. Uh, just like with this Salesforce connector, you can sync contacts and leads to users and roles. You can sync forms with the CRM. Uh, and there are so much other features that I, I, I just cannot list here because the, the, uh, to be honest, I was following Dynamics for the last two years. And it really amazed me how the guys said Actually, Microsoft are putting so much effort into it. And our partner, Publix, are putting so much effort and they are always feature party. So whenever there's new functionality, they are quick to add to, to, to the portal connector as well. The next connector is connector for Marketo. It comes out of the box. Uh, with it, you can sync CMS forms with Marketo. So again, any form that, that is on the website, not just forms that are built with, with the site hint, but also forms that uh, some uh, let's say developer have built like registration forms and so on, they can be synced. So effectively everyone who fills out such form becomes a lead or a non-lead in Marketo. 
Uh, the connector works both for anonymous and no leads and also provides personalization. So you can personalize pages based on fields that are coming from Marketo profiles. So for example, you can personalize for people that has company names equals, I don't know, Telerik. You can personalize by lead score or by just any other fields that, uh, that you can find in Marketo. Now, we have a connector for the Telerik platform and uh, backend services. It's a bit of an uh, advanced topic, but I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes about it. So Sitefinity can generate mobile apps, and these mobile apps can actually uh, get data both from the Sitefinity instance or from the Telerik backend services. But in order for us to, to actually provide the data through the backend services, we have to first put it to the backend services, right? So this is a cloud service that uh, is available to everyone who has a mobile or desktop application and want to, to actually consume data from there. So we have a connector that can sync all dynamic types that you have with, with the cloud, and then this data can be, uh, uh, can be consumed by mobile apps. And if you don't want to use the, the backend services, you can consume data from the Telerik from the Sitefinity services. And um, I'll mention just, just uh, once again that we can generate mobile apps based on any content types in the CMS automatically. And you have the full permission, so who can see what on the mobile phone, who can create data, who can edit data. Uh, you can actually have this data imported into the Telerik app builder so that you can customize, put the logos, put the branding, put the additional business logic. And uh, you can also download the uh, mobile app as a, as a zip file with the entire source code and so on. We have another thing for integrations called publication system and the so-called content pipes. What it does is that it allows you to import XML content from any other system or file uh, system that can produce XML files. So this can be CRMs, this can be marketing automation systems, it can be legacy systems that can convert data from SQL to XML, for example, and so on. And you can mash up content, which means that you can have different uh, sources of, of information. And one item can have like two fields from that system and other fields from other system. And this is one uh, becoming one content item. Also, you can bind the publication system to different social media. And this helps in case uh, you create articles and you want to actually quickly publish to social media without any further sharing. So whenever you publish a news item, it goes to Facebook, to Twitter, and so on. So to summarize the connectors part, we support some of the main business systems, and Sitefint can effectively be part of such a system in which there are CRMs, marketing automation tools, need for web and mobile apps, and also document management and office applications. And I know for a couple of uh, success stories here that some of our customers made made it actually possible to have uh, SharePoint documents directly going to mobile apps. So whenever someone uploads a SharePoint document, it goes to these business applications that are given to, to users and so on. So this is mostly business to business uh, scenario. I know for a case when mobile leads, so people that browse on a website from a mobile phone become leads <coughs> in, in the CRM, not just in the marketing automation systems, and we have some customers that connect just Salesforce with the market system because they are very good uh, integration partners. And, I think, and there's a great integration stories actually in, in this area. So now, before going forward with the data and storage providers, do you have any questions about out-of-the-box connectivity and the connectors that, that we provide? Or um, have you got the need to integrate Sitefinity with any other business systems that I do not <coughs> uh, mention here. There's a question about SharePoint integration. Okay. Is it um, the one for the text integration from the underlying SharePoint text base? Is it the one I mentioned? Yes, yeah, yeah. 
and we have uh, we actually have advanced configuration which uh, uh, um, which is that all the the documents and the binary data can still stay in SharePoint and we get only the metadata which is title summary who uh, actually created this and so on um, and the good thing about the SharePoint connector is that it doesn't require you to install any server-side components on the SharePoint site. So it's only consuming services. So you don't need any server administrators to uh, install plugins and so on. Uh, we can't, yeah. 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 Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. So it's there, and I understand that you can build a connector to mm -hmm. map mm -hmm. fields uh, into such entities. What I'm curious about is whether we can draw data from digital experience cloud into maybe that comes later. So you want to draw data from DC, not to upload to it, right? Uh, in a way, I want, so I want it from within our CRM, CRM users to be able to see what the, the customer viewed on the website, what you know, pages they looked at. And this should live in the CRM, correct? That Secondary scenario that you are thinking. <coughs> Usually, we uh, our scenario is getting data from CRM so that uh, sales and marketing personnel can go to the digital experience cloud and get all the data there. Uh, but because the API is open, you can also integrate any data that's coming from the digital experience cloud per contact also in the CRM and expose it there, uh, including contact fields that we know about, contact behavior that we know about, and even. Um, the URL of the contact in the digital experience cloud to reference, whatever type of integration you're, you're looking to do there. Uh, there is no tooling around that for the time being, but it's possible because the API is open to, to expose it. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. Uh, you have advanced field mapping, so you can say which fields from the XML or nodes go to each field from the site fin site. <laughs> we, we actually have one base XML <coughs> file which we can customize and on top of it we have built the RSS files which allows us both from the RSS which is a specialized XML. Yeah. So with different you schema. You, you have the generic infrastructure which you can customize. Okay. Any other questions? I'll move on. So data and storage providers, SiteFind supports out of the box SQL Server from 2008 to R2 plus uh, SQL Azure, SQL Express, Oracle and MySQL and also file system for storage of the data that are in the CMS. And we also employ this data provider model that is coming from the .NET development. And it allows us basically to have different content served from different databases and sources. So let's say that you want uh, for example, your n news content to be served on the Oracle database and you want your, say, events to be served from a CRM. It, it really doesn't matter for us as long as you have the provider for, for this data. And in the SiteFint UI, this is going to be to actually look completely transparent. So users will not actually know uh, that this item is somehow different than the events or than the other thing. The UI is on top of this. We also have dedicated s storage providers for blob data. So all the images, uh, documents, and so on can be stored, for example, in Windows Azure, in Amazon S3, again, out of the box. <coughs> so this is pretty much what I have been telling about the provider model that you can have different contents coming from different databases. And uh, this is all depends on on the business and what kind of systems you already have in the uh, organization. So if you have a huge database of news and you want these news items to be in, uh, in uh, that database w without actually moving to Sitefinity, everything that you need is just a developer who can create this provider, this data provider, so that the news can appear in Sitefinity as well. 
I mentioned about the blob storage providers that we now support Windows Azure, Amazon S3, we even support Dropbox for businesses, and we support Telerik backend services. So in case your data needs to go to mobile devices, you can upload it to the Telerik backend services and then expose it to wide range of other applications. And in 7.3 I think three, last year we have uh, introduced CDN support for our li for our libraries. So all the images can be automatically be put on a CDN on a thousands of servers without you knowing about where this image exactly stands. So uh, it can be on CloudFront, on edge servers and so on. So this is really about scalability here. <coughs> Uh, to wrap up the provider model, uh, once again, it's really up to you where you actually have the data stored. And it we have uh, examples on GitHub again and, uh, and uh, our uh <coughs> documentation about how you can create a data provider for your particular system and to have this data appear on the website without any things and manual work. Do you have any questions about the storage and provider? Yep. Ivo, do we support SQL Server in Open Access 2014? I'm pretty sure that it meets its, its test it, so we should be able to do that. How was it? But we should double check that. I was running testing on a couple of sites in my development. So the only reason why I haven't put it here is because our QAs uh, have not done ex extensive testing. But since we're using the Open Access product, which is our ORM and data layer, if it supports it, which I believe it does, then we support it as well. Yeah, I was we just have to run the whole suite of tests over it and... It works on my development. Works on my, <laughs> on my PC, yeah. It's trial and error without error. It's, it's, it's still <laughs> working, which means it's just, uh, yeah, we need to verify. It's just a matter of testing then, yeah. We just have to, okay, that's that's a good point and we can probably make it official that with 8.1 we support SQA. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe, uh, to be honest, we haven't tested everything, but um, I noticed that customers like you, like many others, they test with, with different systems and just finds out that it works. Okay. So it's probably, again, we just have to verify it with our QAs and then put it in the official specs. That's, that's a good note as well, thanks. Okay, I'm moving forward to the search providers and services. Uh, out of the box, SiteFinch supports Lucene.net by default. It's a very fast uh, search engine, but Unfortunately, it lacks the support for load balanced uh, environments because the index files that it creates are stored on the file system and when you are in local, in a uh, load balance, you have to sync these file systems and so on. So with the site 27.3 in December last year, we have introduced the cloud search. Uh, and we now provide integration with Azure search services, with Amazon Web Search, with Elasticsearch, with Solar and just with any other search engine that you can come up with. So we have this framework that allows you to plug your search engine by your choice. We have the endpoints documented, so what Sitfinity uh, expects, all the events. So for example, when someone publishes content, that it goes to the index and so on. So all the major search services are, are now supported and the, the search can be used in clouds. Uh, are you going to Say something? No. Okay, okay. Uh, once again, uh, the Amazon Web Search and the Elastic Search are open source projects on GitHub. And the reasons behind this is that we want to show people how to plug their own engines. And this serves as an example. Just to uh, we should verify that we actually officially support it. We support it? So it's my mistake that I haven't put it in the in the specs here in the yeah, it's even, we have it plugged on the website. But it's we on the website as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things well, are changing so fast. <laughs> for your secret feather project. 
Okay, then the next topic is about integration with the API. Um, I have put just a couple of slides here. So Sitefint is built on top of the .NET stack, which means that everything from the .NET development that your developers that are coming from the Microsoft world, they should be al already familiar with, with the system. Uh, the architecture is structured in such a way that uh, there's well, very well defined layers. So it's, uh, you can see data layer, UI layer, module services, and so on. So you can plug basically uh, whenever you want, depending on your business objective. So if you want to change the UI, we have the mechanism to change the UI. So you can now use HTML pad, uh, MVC, and so on. If you want to create a new module that, that actually consumes data from other services, you can do this as well. Um, mostly everything in inside Fint is API. We have APIs for services, uh, for actually for, for content and also services for content. We have APIs for taxonomies, for workflows, for UI, so how to create widgets. We have APIs for synchronization, for task scheduling, so whenever you need to run something on specific intervals of time, we actually have these APIs already in place. Uh, we have APIs and one little application for single sign-on. So it helps uh, developers to create these single sign-on experiences across many applications, so Dynamics, Salesforce, you can have with uh, internets, with Active Directory, and so on. And one of the things that is often neglected is the content type definitions. What this means is that basically Sitefinity Core knows about all the content types that are in Sitefinity. And it knows about the, the fields, uh, the restrictions that each field might have, and so on. So based on these things that we know, we build something like a metadata for these types. And out of this metadata, then we can build UI for the web. So the backend that we have on our CMS is just one branch of this, this tree that uh, we can have. We also have a UI for desktop, and we have built the Windows desktop application, which, which helps people to publish content from the desktop just by knowing the, the, the actual type definitions. And what this means is that whenever uh, someone changes a field in, in the backend, right? So for example, I have a content type with three fields and I add a new field. All the applications that are actually tied with Citfinity, they will get the new definitions for the field. And if the application was developed in such a way that it knows what is the definition, it can update its UI and add the new field there. So with the change just on the Citfinity side, you update all the UIs that you can have. So for example, the, the desktop application we have not released any new versions for about six, seven months at least. But, but even if you add new fields or, or new content types, they will appear into it automatically with all the fields and everything. So we have fields for events, for rich text editing, for summary fields, options, and so on. Uh, in short, that was what I wanted to say about the API. Really, lots of uh, opportunities here. It really depends on the I uh, imagination sometimes of the developer. Uh, do you have any questions about the API? More specifically, think of like, um, do we support API for workflows, for <coughs> example, if you have business systems that, have that has workflows and so on? Um, it can be just anything about APIs. All right, then I'll continue forward with the Sitefinity 8.1 and uh, a bit about the future and what we think about integrations. Uh, first, the first thing that we're going to provide is connectors for translation agencies, which means that people should be able to send content to translation agencies from the Sitefinity UI. And they will also have the option to export and import uh, content both for the agencies and for the website. So think of uh, creating packages. So once you have all the website in uh, English, you can export this content, send to someone, get the translation back, and have the entire website in German, in Chinese, and so on. 
We're going to provide uh, the uh, translating jobs, and this is a definition of content that is packaged and it's sent on a book via the services through, through agencies. So for example, if content writers create content, right, and they say, I'm ready with my English version, they can click the button and send it to an agency, and once the agency is done, and usually behind the agency there is a real person actually that is uh, doing this uh, translating thing, uh, the content is getting back to Citefinity into a state which is waiting approved, for example, and once it gets approved, it appears on the website. Uh, it will work for pages, for content, for widgets, and we will also try to make it work for templates as well, so that people can, can actually translate uh, templates. I'm not sure about it, but we'll do our best here. <coughs> it's still in very early in development. And we'll provide API in case you want to integrate with some special agency that, that you know about, that has APIs. We'll give you the API as well as example about how you can make this integration possible. Then we want to provide uh, integration with email transactional services, which means services that can send millions of emails uh, at once without worrying about spam filters, about delivery, about delays, about failures and so on. Because to be honest, this was one of the main complaints that we heard about the email campaigns that they're not reliable. And sometimes the reason for this is that um, when the website and the web server actually shares the SMTP server on the same server, it kind of uh, becomes a fight for resources, right? So the SMTP server has millions of emails, the, the web server has uh, some millions of other things to do. So we decided that the best possible well way here would be to actually integrate with services like SendGrid, Mailgun, MailChimp, and so on. I mean, services that can send these bulk email, uh, emails at large scale and just uh, forget about it after that. But the email building experience will be still in Citfinity. So you will still be able to build the email templates in Citfinity and then just use this template as a mail through these services. As for the future, we think about providing more connectors to a lot more systems. Uh, we're currently spiking one of the products that, that uh, actually Progress software has. It's a product about connecting to different services, uh, syncing data and so on. They support something like 80 systems at once. So if our spikes prove to be, to be right and working, I hope that we'll be able to provide at once uh, more connectivity to at least 80 more services just like that. And what's next in the DC, Ivo? Would you, would you join here? Yeah, sure. So a bit about the future of the DC Phoenix Cloud. Uh, first, the next steps that uh, are expected to be delivered in the next few months. Uh, you should know that uh, the DC Phoenix Cloud as a cloud product offered as a service. Uh, has a very aggressive release schedule and you can expect to see every month new stuff there that's directly going live. Uh, we don't usually work in large time frames uh, to deliver features, but as a time frame of 8.1, which means uh, July, those are the things that we'll be working on. Uh, in the data integration area, we are going to integrate mostly with out of that list uh, the mobile platforms and the social networks, so we are going to provide the story end-to-end -end, uh, within four months. We are going to go live with the CRM integration, which means Salesforce and Dynamics are not only supported, but actually uh, supported with high usability and easy configuration. And we are going to start integrating one by one with different uh, email, email marketing systems. So marketing automation scenarios will get covered as well. Probably that effort will continue also after this four month period. Uh, we are going to start tackling mobile personalization scenarios. So mobile applications will, will be able to be also customized for each different user based on the same uh, metrics and the same approach that we're using for the website. And we're going to provide marketing executives with a dashboard right in their pocket. So we're going to have a mobile app that enc uh, encapsulates everything that's <coughs> most, Im most important in the digital experience cloud uh, and provide it as a mobile application. And uh, a bit more in the future, look forward for the product where it, it is going. Um, now that we have the predictive analytics, 
we want to provide a comprehensive visualization for the, of the entire customer journey. So for the time being, we are talking about segments of contacts, but uh, in the future, we are going to also be talking about paths. Paths that are not only on the website, but paths that involve different channels for one single contact or for groups of contacts. And we're going to visualize it in a manner that allows people to really start um, playing with it and uh, configure it and so on, so that unique insights can be drawn by this feature, which is uh, almost unique on the market. Uh, the automated marketing advisor is something I already mentioned uh, as an uh, answer to some of the questions after the session. That's actually the capability of providing the predictive analytics based on configuration and rules uh, as an automated workflow between the website and uh, the digital experience cloud, but it also involves scenarios like uh, automated ads that are not on the website but are chasing the user outside the website and are based on the same insights and again that will be automated without the need of a marketer to configure every single page or every single app uh, by itself. <coughs> uh, we will be offering propensity scoring based on the similar predictive analytics models that we have. Uh, we now have segments of contacts uh, that have different propensity scoring, so different tendency to convert. We're going to be exposing exactly that for each contact. So uh, opening uh, a single contact view, uh, a salesperson can find out what is the exact propensity score of this user right now. And uh, last but not least, we are going to add a lot more reporting and ROI calculations. Currently, we are working mostly with attribution models that are in percentages, that are in absolute values, and so on, that will allow in the system to be configured actual amounts so that you can see based on the investment in a certain digital asset or in a certain campaign, uh, how that compares with the revenue that, that comes out of the conversion, uh, again, based on configuration in the system, uh, how much the revenue per purchase is, how much the revenue per uh, different uh, conversions is. <coughs> and that's so it for the future of the Digital Experience Cloud. Yeah, and this was our short session as well about what kind of integration and uh, connectivity we provide. Uh, I'll just mention once again that in 2014 we got recognized by Gartner just because of these stories and the way about how we think about integrations and uh, playing nice with so many applications there. Do you have any, any questions to wrap up this session? And then we'll decide if we're going to do the others, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the format that, that we're going to support. Yeah. It seems that this is the, the standard format that uh, all translation agencies prefer to work with. So that's the format that, that we're going to use for sure. Uh, we're targeting, still not decided, but something like mid of July. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, absolutely, absolutely, because basically agencies charge differently per type of content that they want to translate, right? So there are agencies that can translate even songs, even MP3 files, images, and so on. So they charge differently, and we want to provide this uh, in a something like a dashboard inside thing. And it's going to look like uh, this translating jobs is estimated by I don't know how much. Do you agree? Yes, no. If this yes, then send DQ. So would interfering configuration require the validation of the partner for that to work? Uh, it should work out of the box. Yeah. But uh, if there is a requirement for uh, you know connection with other translation agency different from those we would offer, we would make sure you have the extensibility points. Yeah. And the framework. Lion Bridge, it's a US uh, company. They bought also Clay Tablet, yeah. which is uh, another company, right? 
so we are going to integrate with them uh, there was one another I think something with Meril or something yeah Merobrink and probably only these two companies as a start yeah 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 Yes, so with every piece of content, we're going to send a preview link that is actually going to be valid for the next, say, 90 days. And you can access this content only by this preview link so that they have the all the context about what, what kind of content this is and so on. Yeah. Actually, this is part of the API of the agencies that I have nowadays. So 